Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, the Flyfish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Today we'll be tying a uh, little dragonfly pattern. That's actually not so little. It's a fairly large fly, um, considering um, that it's for, for trout and stuff. But uh, it's one of the bigger uh, patterns I tie for trout, um, at least nymphs and stuff. So um, before we get going, um, this is uh, this is the final um video for the giveaway so uh, make sure uh, to stay to the end and uh, you'll have some instructions at the end and that'll tell you what to do to enter the contest or the, the giveaway not a contest the giveaway for copy of my books and a selection of flies that I tie on this channel because uh, we've, we've reached a thousand subscribers that's so that's what I decided I'm gonna do so just stick around to the end and uh, make a comment on this one make a comment on uh, the last one on Thursday and make a comment on the Tuesday one so I'll have links in the description below um, but yeah make comments on all three and then uh, and like all three um, and then uh, yeah you'll uh, you'll uh, uh, be entered three times then so alrighty I'll let uh, I'll we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end but here we go so that's what we'll be tying a little scruffy little dragon pattern. Um, it uh, works really well. This one here, I cr kind of crowded the eye just a tiny bit there, but I'll stay back on the one we're tying, I hope. <laughs> so, we'll uh, put that off to the side. Where the heck did I put my... Oh, this is going to be funny if I can't find my hooks right off the bat. Oh, I might have to go dig. Oh, no, they're right there on my... Right where I put them. So, I'm going to start off with a Hens BL724 in a... Uh, size 10 this one is so it's just a uh, straight shank uh, heavy wire um, nymph hook uh, or streamer hook so okay so whatever brand you like I really like these hens hooks um, they're, they're just I, I like the fact that they're super super sharp and they're uh, they got that little bent in bent in point which helps hold and they're barbless right so and I, I like tying barbless so okay we'll start off with a little bit of uh, Zemperfly nano soap to start just to get our uh, base layer down, I'm going to put a little bit of wax on it because nano silk can be slippery. So I'm going to start back just a little bit from the eye. Put a base layer down. Nip off my waist. I'm going to come back roughly to the point. Then what I've done is I've taken some, because this is going to be a floating dragon. I want this one to float. Um, I want this one to be fished deep. And I want it to be able to come up, slowly come up in the water column, right? And then when you when you strip it, it'll dive, dart down, dive down, and then it'll float back up again, and then it'll dart back down. So this is going to have an underbody foam. Um, this is a, happens to be rainy sheet foam in a four mil. Whoops, sorry, in uh, in um, uh, olive. Um, quite often, what I'll just use is parapost. The white parapost, the little tiny ones, but I can't find where I put my parapost. So I just cut a little, little strip. I'm gonna take the tip, just make my, make a nice long tie-in, and just be careful with the nano silk or GSPs if you're using them. They have a tendency of wanting to cut and rip foam, so be careful. You want it nicely tied in. And come back up to about there and then I'm gonna just now quite often I'll rip it right here so just be careful we got you want to nice and tight at the back right because you don't want that bulk right at the back end and then I'm just gonna kind of overlap it and overlap it and overlap it and that's it I don't want to go any further forward there so it's gonna come around tie that off this is underbody, so who cares if it goes over top and over your foam? Nobody's going to see it, and going over it like this actually makes it a little stronger, right? So just cut that off. Just make sure you don't have too much of a bulge up at the front here. Oh, and don't cut your thread like that. So I'm just going to come back and make sure that's tied in. So it's just going to help give it a little bit of buoyancy. Okay, now I'm going to take some uh, strung pheasant rump, natural. This happens to be the old, this is an old package from Superfly. Like a really old package. I don't usually use much Superfly stuff anymore. Just because it's old. Can't even get it anymore, I think. So, and I'm just going to take one feather and I'm just going to 
just take all the tips together. And I want not a very long tail. It's just going to be a short little guy. Okay, basically all this is representing is on the back end. And I don't know technically what it's called. You know, I probably should. But there's a little, almost like a little valve, a little jet on the back of a, it's a three-pronged jet on the back of a, of a dragonfly. Um, and it, it'll open up and close and, and stuff like that as they burst water out the back end for them to move. That's how they move. It's a jet propulsion, how they move fast. Um, it's not how they normally do. Like they would walk, just walk around normally. But if they need to escape, these little things will open and close and it'll be like a jet propulsion will blast water out of there. So, okay. Next step is just some, this is just some uh, straight, doesn't matter, we, you can go with whatever kind of chenille you've got kicking around, but this is just a green, medium chenille. It might even be a large, I'm not sure. Yeah, it actually it is a large. And I'm just going to go back up to the front to there, about there, because I want to leave a bit of room so I don't crowd myself. Come back right to that tie-in point of the tail. Come back forward again. Stop it there. I'm not going to get a lot of turns in of this. First one really tight again. I want it as thin as thin as I can back there. And then I can let go a little bit and get a thicker, a little bit of a thicker body. That might end up crowding me, so I'll stop there. Okay. So all I've done is I've locked that in. Three wraps, four wraps, one, two, three, four wraps. So, okay. Come back with my thread to there. Now I'm going to get another one of these string, strung pheasant uh, uh, rump feathers. This time I'm going to try to find the shortest one. If you can't, don't have short ones, so don't worry about it. I'll show you at the end. Because um, no matter what I do here, I can't find short enough ones. That's fairly short. Actually, that might be short enough. We'll see. Um, usually what I'll end up doing is, no, that, that I'll have to do it as well, is I'll tear them a bit. Just randomly tear them lengthwise. For the length okay so I'm going to tie this in there's the one side is it's got that barred look on it the other side is it's got the barred look but it's a lot softer put the uh, outside of the feather towards you get that nicely tied in get rid of your uh, stem I hope you guys are all tying your butts off and enjoying the season and getting ready for Christmas here. And you know, it is tying season, at least that's what I call it tying season. Um, it's uh, time of the year where, especially here in Alberta, when it's minus 34, like it has been the last few days, where you just kind of sit around and then tie some flies and stay out of the cold. So, alrighty, so. Just, it's going to give me one, maybe one and a half wraps, two wraps. That's it. Go right on top of that last one. Doesn't look pretty. Don't worry about it. It's, it this is meant to be a scruffy looking fly. Stroke it all back. All that material, stroke it all back. And then go right up and over top of it. See how I'm, I'm training those fibers back. Okay, don't worry if it's a little scraggly looking. That's it's actually not bad. You want that in this fly. Okay, so my next step here is I'm going to put a one feather, one CDC feather, and I'm going to put it in a material clip, and I'm going to, going to wrap it. So I'm going to put this into my material clip, my feather. Okay, and then I'm going to cut the stem, obviously. Leave the stem out of there. When you're doing these, it's nice to have a a long bladed scissor. Like these are, well, it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but they're about six inches, seven inches long, these ones. They're from Renome. They're actually a braid cutting scissor, but they're great for this kind of stuff. So I'm just going to counter spin my thread to flatten it. Oh, sorry about that. My, my buddies are yapping on the messenger there they're you know they've been we've been talking about fly tying and all kinds of other stuff on it so so now i'm just going to flatten it out as much as i can see if i can split this thread my eyesight's kind of wonky right now but 
I'm going to be right up against there, so. There we go. I've slapped it out a bit. Oh, split the thread. Take your material clip. This, by the way, is just one of those little fridge magnet material, uh, little clips that you put on your, your fridge so you can, you know, post your uh, recipes or whatever. They work great for this. So I'm just going to get it in there. Let it go. Hold it nice and tight. Make sure that doesn't they don't come out. Give my bottom in a spin. Let it go. And that natural, that spin that you put into the uh, thread will spin up your CDC. There you go. See? I don't know, it's kind of hard to see there because of the focus, but that's the way it is. So you'll see when I start threading when I start wrapping it. So yeah, this gives it a nice, really nice uh, spin. Hold these feathers back, and then I'm just going to bring my CDC right up against it. I want to be right tight against there, and then stroke back every turn. Make sure all that material gets stroked back. Stroke back. Stroke back. This basically will help in it twofold, threefold. One, it looks good. Um, it's just another thing that moves in the pattern. Um, two, it will help a little bit with flotation because uh, CDC likes to float. And three, it also picks up light, CDC does. So um, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if we can see that. But you see all those little tiny individual fibers and each fiber has a little fibers going off on a 90. They pick up light and bubbles and stuff. So that, that it... Uh, it attracts the fish. So now I'm going to take a pair of uh, these are medium um, uh, mono eyes from Hairline. Make your own if you like. Buy them, whatever. I'm too lazy to make them. So, especially when they're like three dollars for thirty of them. So again, just gonna put on my eyes. Get that back a bit. There we go. That's good. I, I want them close to the to the hook eye but I want to leave a little bit of room behind them because I'm going to put some dubbing in there after right so let's make sure these twist on right and are centered roughly there we go so I'm just figure eighting I'm going once over top underneath once over top the other way underneath here once over top like there underneath and then over here and then over here and then under just random, right? But figure eighting all the time. It's just a will help lock them. Okay, then I'll stay behind it. I'm gonna get now this you can do with a more natural color if you like. I actually quite like this a little bit of this hairline black ice black peacock. Um, it's almost like a pheasant, uh, um, a, a, a peacock hurl color, but with shine in it, right? So. Um, you could put peacock curl on here. You can use a more natural looking dubbing. Um, that's up to you. I don't put very much on. Just put a little bit just like that. That's all you want. It's more of an, just a, a clean up to clean up your tie in points than anything. But that extra color, is, 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 it really, really does help. So, um, and then I'm just going to whip finish right behind the uh, eye once again i'm going to take a little bit of the sallies because i've got all that dubbing and all that material in the way i don't want to try to put it on after just put a little bit of sallies right on my thread or head cement whatever you like using and then just go and just do your whip finish and that'll pull it right in there right nice and tight just giving that a really good pull make sure that's tight nipping off my thread and now, if my my legs, that's what the the uh, um, uh, the strung pheasant rump here, these longer fibers, if those were like too long, if they were like past the tail or anything like that, I would just grab them and just pull them, just yank, yank individually. Don't cut, don't cut, pull, yank. That's what I did with the other one I showed you guys, which wasn't as pretty, but um, this one here, I yanked them out, I pulled them out, right, because they were way back here, they were really long. So, yeah, just uh, just 
make either use short ones if you got, if you got them um, or yank them like, like break them off the other thing i could have done here to make it even more buoyant is instead of using these eyes i could have put a pair of black um uh, booby foam eyes in and then it really would be uh you get a, the smaller booby foam and uh, yeah then it would be really super buoyant but this is quite buoyant this fly with that underbody uh, foam so all righty well i hope you guys like that one i know a few guys uh that i um i asked people to make comments on my on my last couple of videos to see what they want to tie and a few guys asked for a dragon so here's a one dragon um i'll be trying to tie up uh, some of the comment uh, some of the flies that people have commented so uh in the meantime guys um like i said i'll have the links below in the in the video below i'll have the links uh to the last two but uh make sure you go to this one like it and uh, make a comment about what you would like me to tie in the future um same with the last two uh the one on tuesday and the one on thursday uh same thing make a comment about what you'd like to see uh tied and um give it a thumbs up um uh, and subscribe to the channel uh you you must be subscribed to uh this channel to be able to uh, uh be eligible for the contest so Alrighty, for the giveaway, not a contest. So, all right, tie lines, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Spread the word, let everybody know, and uh, we'll see you guys soon.